Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the U.S. Army Futures Command Activation Ceremony. Please stand for the arrival of the official party. I remain standing for the National Anthem, sung by Staff Sergeant Nikita Fox, an invocation delivered by Chaplain Colonel Mitch A. Butterworth. Now entering the room is the official party. The Honorable Mark T. Esper, Secretary of the Army. The Honorable Greg Abbott, Governor of Texas. General Mark A. Milley, Chief of Staff of the Army. The Honorable John Cornyn, U.S. Senator, Texas. The Honorable Steve Adler, Mayor of Austin. And General John M. Murray, Commanding General, U.S. Army, Futures Command. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets regular the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there all oh, say does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave i invite you to join me in prayer Today, we pray for this inter enterprise designed to posture the Army for the future. We pray for the success of this enterprise in building a new construct for the U.S. Army. May this enterprise and the people who serve deliver modern and critical capabilities to the soldier on the battlefield. Today, we pray that you would bless this partnership between the U.S. Army, the state of Texas, and the city of Austin, and the University of Texas. I pray these things in your powerful name. Amen. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, Secretary Esper. Good morning, Austin. And good morning, ladies and gentlemen, uh, gentlemen. Uh, Governor Abbott, Senator Cornyn, members of the Te Texas Congressional Delegation, Mayor Adler, members of the UT System Board of Regents, industry leaders, members of the Chamber of Commerce, and all other distinguished guests, welcome. Thank you for joining us this morning as we mark the establishment of Army Futures Command here in Austin, Texas. Army Futures Command represents our commitment to modernize the Army to ensure we are prepared to fight and win every future conflict. And locating it here in Austin demonstrates the type of bold change needed to excel in today's complex environment. This would not have been possible without the leadership and direction provided certainly by the Chief of Staff of the Army and I would say our two-point men the Under Secretary of the Army and the Vice Chief of Staff McConville. I want to thank you all for your excellent work. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention and thank General Ed Cardone and his Futures Command Task Force for all the great work they have done to put this organization together. This is an historic day for our Army as we make the most significant reorganization since 1973. 
45 years ago. The last time our arm, army underwent such reforms, we were at a strategic inflection point in history. Back then, our army was emerging from what was then the largest, the longest conflict in our history, the Vietnam War. And we had to reorient ourselves against the strategic conventional threat called the Soviet Union. In the following years, the Army's leadership instituted a series of bold initiatives that transformed the Army. That's when we learned of the big five weapon systems that are with us today, the National Training Center and Airland Battle Doctrine. Today, we are at a similar point in history. Strategic competition against our near-peer competitors is once again the number one threat facing our nation's security. In June, the Chief of Staff and I published the Army Vision, which characterizes the future Army we need to contend with these threats. And today, we are taking a significant step to ensure we achieve that vision. Here is that vision, a two-page document. And not far above our signatures on the back page was one of the key objectives. And that objective says, with regard to equipping the force, quote, modernize the force by first reforming the current acquisition system and unifying the modernization enterprise under a single command. Maintaining the Army's overmatch requires a major shakeup of how we prepare for future combat. To ensure our readiness for the next war, we are bringing the Army's entire modernization enterprise under one roof, Army Futures Command. AFC, as we call it, will provide unity of effort and unity of command to our entire modernization process. It will synchronize the disparate elements and sets of entities to achieve a common purpose. It will develop the Army's future warfighting concepts. It will generate innovative solutions through research and development. And it will fill the next generation of combat systems in accordance with our six modernization priorities. AFC will ensure that we get our soldiers the weapons and equipment they need when they need it to fight and win. We are excited to establish the Army Futures Command Headquarters outside a traditional military base. We knew that to do this right, we needed to immerse ourselves in an environment where innovation occurs at speeds far faster than our current process allows. We searched for a location that had the right combination of top-tier academic talent, cutting-edge industry, and an innovative private sector. And we chose Austin to headquarter AFC because it not only possesses the talent, the entrepreneurial spirit, and access to key partners we are seeking, but also because it offers the quality of life our people desire and a cost of living they can afford. The establishment of this headquarters represents an incredible partnership between the military, government, academic, and the private sector. And I would re be remiss if I didn't mention the incredible community ex support we have and expect to receive by locating our headquarters here. We are extremely grateful to the Texas Congre Congressional Delegation for all the support they have provided to the Army to help us turn this command from a concept to a reality. To Governor Abbott, Sir, thank you for all of your efforts uh, with this, as well as the continued support you provide our soldiers throughout the state of Texas. To Mayor Adler, sir, thank you for fostering the partnership between the city of Austin and the United States Army. To Chancellor Faulkner, we are excited to get to work here in Austin, and we are grateful to the University of Texas system for allocating us the office space needed to get AFC up and running. We are eager eager to begin interfacing with entrepreneurs and private industry at incubator hubs like the Capital Factory as we begin developing solutions to meet our modernization needs. Like all things, we put our best people against the problem. So we have General Mike Murray and Command Sergeant Major Michael Crosby, our two extremely talented leaders that will guide this command and be the point men for the Army's future. I know they will deliver for us, as they have many times before, over the course of their great and storied careers. Now, while we cannot predict the future with certainty, we certainly can prepare for the future, and that's what Army Futures Command will do. Our soldiers deserve nothing less 
than the best weapons and equipment possible when we ask them to fight our nation's wars. I am confident that Army Futures Command is the right organization established at the right time here in the right location to ensure that the United States Army remains the world's premier ground combat force for generations to come. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary Esper. Ladies and gentlemen, Governor Abbott. Well, thank you all, and uh, thank you, Secretary Esper, for uh, your kind of words. Thank you for your leadership. Uh, thank you for making this come to fruition here. Also want to thank Undersecretary McCarthy, who I had the opportunity to work with uh, in collaboration along the way. General Milley, thank you uh, for what you're doing and your leadership, as well as uh, Lieutenant General Murray, thank you so much. I had the, the honor to host you at the Governor's Mansion yesterday and get to know you a whole lot better. Look forward to working with you going forward. From a broader perspective, I want to thank all of you all. Uh, for your service to the mightiest military in the history of the world. And I also want to thank you for your commitment to make sure we keep it that way by locating your Army Futures Command right here in the heart of Texas. And I also want to thank our federal partners led by Senator John Cornyn with the aid of Senator Cruz as well as the entire congressional delegation. I want to thank you for your leadership at the national level to help land this transformative command operation. And I also want to thank Mayor Adler for your leadership. I think that we all know that today would not be happening without what you have done at the local level, partnering with the premier and highest caliber economic development professionals right here in the greater Austin region. I also want to thank uh, the assistance uh, on the state side. The only one I see, well, we've got several. Uh, we, we have uh, the state senator, uh, Donna Campbell, who's in charge of Veterans Affairs as well as military operations. Uh, we have a former member of the United States Army, Tony Dale, right by our side, a state representative, uh, state representative Paul Workman. Uh, thank you all uh, for your service. I'm sure there's some others I don't see right now, but we appreciate what you do in helping Texas lead the way in what we are so proud of, and that is our connection to our United States military. And I want to thank our host today and a cornerstone partner in this endeavor, and that is uh, the University of Texas system. I want to thank Chancellor, Interim Chancellor Faulkner. I want to thank President Finvez uh, for what you have done in this. Many here are, are getting to see a fantastic view. For those who are not familiar with Austin, most of what you see in the vista behind you uh, is uh, one of the premier universities in the entire world, which is the University of Texas. If you see a building with a, an orange roof on it, uh, that is a University of Texas building. I notice that there's a lot of people here today who are not from Texas, so I'm going to find it fascinating as we see the evolution of your, let's say, involvement in the local community. To see if anyone over the past year, there's Senator Cruz right there, if, see if there's anyone over uh, the coming year who learns the phrase, hook them horns, or <laughs> maybe there is, <laughs> some people know it already. Uh, maybe next time you come back. You said you're from Pittsburgh. We'll come back. Maybe Texas needs to play Pittsburgh or something like that. To, to really, get, if we can get you back, uh, I can arrange that. We'll work with President Finvest to make sure we get that on the agenda. But let me just say this. So on behalf of the people of the state of Texas, uh, let me express how incredibly proud we are that the United States Army chose our state and chose this city to launch the Army's most significant reorganization effort in more than four decades. But, as you might imagine, this candidly is a very natural partnership. That's because this has been a long and enduring bond between the state of Texas as well as with the United States military. And Austin, Texas, and the University of Texas have become the epicenter of innovation and transformative technology. This headquarters takes the next step in the shared mission that we all have been working towards. 
Now, as the world transitions from an industrial age to an information age, the threats that our nation confront continue to evolve. One thing that we all do is we all grasp the gravity that is simply not enough for America to simply adapt to these challenges. Instead, the United States must lead the world in innovation and technology advancements just as we have for decades. And there is no better place for the United States Army to embark on this mission than right here in Austin, Texas. During the selection process for this headquarters, I had the opportunity to work with Under Secretary Ryan McCarthy. One thing that he talked about was the need for a talented pool of brain power. He talked about innovators who can disrupt the status quo and usher in a new era of technological advancement. That is precisely what has been happening here in Austin and in Texas. This entire region offers a unique opportunity for the Army to work with some of the very best in academia as well as in the private sector. With large technology companies already based here, with new innovative startups emerging every single day, Austin and the surrounding areas continuously attract the best and brightest minds. In fact, this transformation is happening so rapidly as you look out across the horizon here, you see the reason why we have chosen a new name for the state bird. The new name for the state bird is now the crane because we have so many cranes building so many new buildings across the entire region because the region is growing so rapidly with those innovators focused on technology and information sectors. Additionally, Texas is the proud home to world-class universities that produce the next generation of innovators and entrepreneurs. These factors combined with our state's unwavering commitment to our military make Texas the premier location for the Futures Command Headquarters. We cherish this partnership and we look forward to the many innovations that it will produce. Together we will ensure that the men and women of our armed forces have the very best tools to defend our freedoms and to promote security across the entire globe. I want to thank Secretary Esper, Under Secretary McCarthy, and all of those involved in bringing this Futures Command Headquarters right here to Austin, Texas. Let me say, welcome to the Lone Star State. Thank you, Governor Abbott. Ladies and gentlemen, Senator of Texas, Cornyn. Well, good morning. This is a great day for Austin. This is a great day for Texas. This is a great day for the United States Army and for the United States of America. I just have to add here at the beginning of uh, my comments, uh, my mind is uh, on some of the news we've seen it today. Our friend John McCain, who has uh, been suffering uh, from a terrible disease, is uh, I wish he could be here because I know from talking to General Milley, he was key as chairman of the Armed Services Committee in the Senate to work on this project, and I know he would love to be here and be pleased, so our thoughts are with him and his family. Of course, I'm honored to be here with uh, my friend Governor Abbott and my friend Mayor Adler and uh, to welcome the Army Futures Command here to Austin, Texas. Secretary Esper, it's great to have you here. Secretary McCarthy, General Milley, used to be just up the street at Fort Hood, where we first met. General McConville and uh, General Murray, congratulations on your promotion and this uh, important assignment. On behalf of all of my friends and colleagues in the Texas congressional delegation, uh, including Senator Cruz, I wanted to make sure that uh, you knew how welcome you are here and how glad 
I am to be here with you, together with those of the Texas delegation. A few months ago, I joined Ted and others in sending Secretary Esper a letter encouraging him to bring the command to Texas. I know you got a lot of letters, Mr. Secretary, but we sent it because we care deeply about the Army and we knew that Austin would be the perfect place for these headquarters. And once the list of cities had narrowed, I followed up with another note to the Secretary. And I appreciate your being so responsive and I am just could not be happier about the outcome. I want to thank the leadership at the University of Texas system. And I see Admiral McRaven here. Somewhere I know he had to be involved in all of this. Uh, I can only guess, uh, but it's great to see him and his wife and thank him for his great service to our country and to the university. Of course, the Austin Chamber and all the regional chambers here in Central Texas, along with the Capitol Factory for their work in bringing this command to Austin. We wouldn't have achieved this critical win without this teamwork. And let's give everybody who contributed to that effort a round of applause right now. So as you've heard, the establishment of the Army Futures Command is the most significant Army reorganization since 1973 and makes Austin the epicenter for Army technology investment. Maybe the answer is obvious, but some are saying, well, why Austin? Why didn't one of the other four cities that were on the short list, why didn't they get the, uh, this great honor? We know the Army had plenty of excellent places to choose from, but I like to think of Austin as a city of the future. Look no further than the construction cranes that my friend Governor Abbott pointed to. There's a lot going on here, and I think the interface between the Army and the private sector and academia is the right formula for the command. The Army, of course, wanted to be close to a hub of innovation, which Austin certainly is, with roughly 6,500 high-tech companies and events like South By each year. It's also the city of the future because of the talent being produced here. Major academic institutions like the University of Texas, Houston Tellison, St. Edwards, Texas State, Texas A&M, and thousands of students graduating every year with degrees in STEM fields. And the last reason I believe Austin was chosen was because it's inside of an important regional corridor with historic ties to the military. Not only Camp Mabry right here in Austin, but not far up the street, Fort Hood, and down a few miles south from here, Joint Base San Antonio. These military installations will now be joined by the Army Futures Command. It's not just about Texas football or barbecue or music festivals or the tech scene anymore. Austin is now the home to military innovation as well. If my hometown, San Antonio, is known as Military City, USA, I think Austin could be called Military Innovation City, USA, Mayor. And as somebody who now is a transplant here to Austin and someone who grew up as an Air Force brat, I couldn't be any prouder. The Army expects this command to be the home to about 100 soldiers and 400 civilians to start with, and over time, perhaps even more. These men and women will be led by General John Murray, who was confirmed earlier this week by the Senate and promoted just this morning. General Murray, I think your experience and commitment to public service makes you well suited to head this incredible undertaking. Being a little bit of a technology junkie myself, I can't wait to check in with you periodically to learn about the new things that you develop as a result of this enterprise. And I'm glad this new assignment means you'll be back here in Texas with your family for a while. General Murray and his staff will create cross-functional teams focused on specific things that the Army wants to build or improve or just simply to discover, like next-gen combat vehicles, uh, improving soldier lethality and survival, cloud and network capabilities. And that brings me to my last point which is why the Army Futures Command and its mission are so necessary. The reason is plain and simple. Our military readiness and our national security depend on it. 
New operational concepts will be transformed from the abstract into real-world technology that the Army can acquire. Then warfighters will benefit from these new tools in the battlefield. In a dangerous world, strained by escalating cyber threats and threatened by the rising power of China and Russia, the U.S. military must continue to lead with evolving technologies in order to maintain our strategic advantage. This is our only option. There is no plan B. We have no choice but to constantly modernize our military. It's a national imperative, and we can't afford to take that responsibility lightly. In closing, I'll just say that I think the Army Futures Command is aptly named. When it comes to our national defense, we should always be looking toward the future. It's incredible to think that starting in just a few weeks, young people born in the immediate aftermath of 9-11 will now be eligible to enlist in the United States military. These young people have grown up in a world rife with new conflicts and dangers, the likes of which our founders could never have imagined. It's critical that as brave men and women continue to answer the call to serve our country, we do our part to give them the tools they need in order to carry out that mission. The Army's Future Command, Futures Command, therefore, is most definitely a step in the right direction. Thank you for allowing me on behalf of the entire Texas delegation here to welcome you to Austin. May God bless you as you embark on this new mission, and may you continue to bless the great state of Texas and the United States of America. Thank you, Senator Cornyn. Ladies and gentlemen, Mayor Adler. Mr. Secretary, Governor, uh, Senator Cornyn, Senator Cruz, uh, General Milley, General Murray. I'm not sure I've ever addressed a room full of so many distinguished leaders. I'm not sure where etiquette says I'm supposed to stop. But he is honored uh, to have you all here. On behalf of the city of Austin, Texas, we say to the U.S. Army Futures Command, welcome home. Austinites are, are proud Americans and we are fiercely proud Texans. And we recognize that what we love about our country and our state, our freedoms, our quality of life, are not guaranteed, but must be defended and actively preserved. Austin is proud and excited to be a part of that defense in our small way. Now, we know that you were considering multiple cities uh, before you chose Austin. And we know you chose Austin because of some pretty serious advocacy uh, on the part of our senators and our governor. We know that you chose Austin because it's in Texas, and state leadership and policies help make Austin a more attractive choice. We know you chose Austin because of the University of Texas, because what happens here changes the world. But we also know that you chose Austin because of what you described as Austin's culture. Austin is innovative, it is creative, it is entrepreneurial, it's a city of early adopters. It's beautiful, it's friendly, it's welcoming and supportive, and bottom line, it's weird. <laughs> you know, if you haven't uh, already picked up a t-shirt or a coffee mug that says, keep Austin weird to our out-of-town guests, you need to make sure you do and take it back home with you. Now, keep Austin weird means to me that in this city, it's okay to take risks. It's okay to fail in this city so long as you do it quickly and then you innovate and you iterate and you keep trying until you succeed. It is okay to be different in this city. You know, it's, um, 
Um, we, we, we support new ideas and new ways of thinking. That's why you can walk down our streets and sometimes see people with red hair or riding by on their bicycle in a thong. But it is that risk-taking affirmance that makes Austin the incubator of innovation that it is. General Murray, my, my wife and I uh, uh, enjoyed the opportunity to have dinner with you and, you and Jane. Uh, and, and we talked about how Austin could best welcome you and the Army's future. And you told me that the mission of the command needs Austin to share our culture with you. And General, we want to do our part. Just as we are an incubator of innovation for our state, we are signing up to help and assist you in this mission as well. We are proud and excited to do our duty too. You know, I welcomed, I opened my talks by welcoming the, the command uh, and, and I want you to call on me and the city uh, for, for anything that we can do to support you. But to General Murray and to your wife, Jane, we know that, that you served just up the road in Fort Hood for almost 10 years. So to the two of you, we say, welcome back home. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Adler. Ladies and gentlemen, General Milley. Thanks, Mayor, for those words. Uh, I have to confess, I just had a really weird mental image of Mike Murray driving down the road in a thong, so. I don't know, I know we're being live streamed. I hope that doesn't destroy everybody's day. Uh, might have a few nightmares about that, but. Um, hey, look, at thanks, and welcome uh, to everybody. This is an exciting day for the Army. Uh, exciting day for Austin. Exciting day, really, uh, for the nation. And it, and it wouldn't be here, we wouldn't be here today, and. Uh, this event wouldn't be happening, this command wouldn't be opening, Mike Murray wouldn't have been promoted from three-star general to four-star general this morning. None of this would be happening uh, without someone who's not here today, and that's Senator John McCain, uh, an American hero. It was uh, he who we recently, or the, the Congress recently named the uh, NDAA after. Uh, it was he and I that met in his office, and I'm getting ready for confirmation. <clears throat> and those of you who know Senator McCain would appreciate uh, that he uh, talked to me candidly uh, and said how hosed up the United States Army was in the world of acquisition and, and uh, procurement, futures, and modernization, and so on. And we're lucky here to have at least two witnesses to those conversations, Chris Bros and Jim Hickey, who are from Senator McCain's office and representing him here. And he said, General, you gotta, you gotta dig into this, you gotta get this fixed, and oh, by the way, you got a hearing coming up, so you better have some answers. And I was like, well, roger that. I was born at night, but it wasn't last night, so I figured, okay, I better be paying attention. So I'm back to the office, and I got that guy right there, uh, Mike Murray, and a couple of others, a guy named Ed Cardone, who's not here today, uh, Jim Richardson, who is, and a few others, and we sat in the office, and we said, okay, you know, here's the guidance from uh, the, the chair of the Senate Armed Services Committee, and, and we looked at ourselves, held the mirror up, and we realized that we did have a whole series of issues and challenges uh, within the Army. Uh, so we got the whiteboards out, and we uh, decided to put pen to paper and uh, went through multiple years, two years, really, of organizational design and reflection and, and so on. And then, luckily, a couple of guys came onto the scene, uh, a guy named Ryan McCarthy, sitting right over here, uh, a guy named Mark Esper sitting here as a secretary. And now we had civilian support in the office of the Secretary of the Army, in the office of the Under Secretary of the Army. And that provided enormous energy and momentum uh, because in the military, in the bureaucracy of uh, the Pentagon and the DC area and in American politics, as it should be, you can't get anything done without civilian authorities. So Secretary McCarthy uh, took the ball. I, I think of him as the Tom Brady. Uh, of the team, and 
And I think a Secretary Esper is sort of the Belichick, right? Uh, sorry, the wrong state, Governor, but, uh, but the analogy works. So they, they provided the energy uh, and, and took the idea and turned it into reality. Uh, and they took what Mike Murray and Ed Cardone and Jim Richardson and several others, and they took Senator McCain's idea and they turned it into reality, and that's what we're seeing today, uh, an attempt at significant uh, and deep uh, reform of the United States as we approach the future. So that's the, the short version of the history of this thing. But you ask yourself, what's this all about? What is it? What is this Futures Command thing all about? It's about a three-letter word called war. War is something, a human behavior that you and I and all of us who've been there, uh, Mike Murray's got 48 months in combat. Uh, many of us uh, have uh, been shot at, blown up, sniped at. None of us liked it. My father hit the beach at Iwo Jima. Nobody wants war. But war is a human behavior that unfortunately has not been purged yet from the human kind. And the possibility or probability of war in the future is not small. And we need to do everything we can to prevent it. And one of the ways you prevent war is you prepare for war. And you establish what is a bumper sticker sort of a peace through strength, but it's a very true bumper sticker. And this command is our scout into the future. This command is the command of the army that's going to look over the hill. Most of the army is involved in current operations. Today's fight, fight tonight. I just came from Afghanistan and Iraq and, and Jordan and Syria and Israel. And most of us for the last 16, 17 years have been wrapped up in today. But we need to think about tomorrow. Today's dangerous enough. Tomorrow could be very, very dangerous. And the only thing that is more expensive than preventing a war is fighting a war. And the only thing more expensive than fighting a war is fighting and losing a war. So this command is all about setting the United States Army up to be not only winning on a battlefield, but to be decisive and absolutely dominant on a battlefield so that we inflict punishment and destroy the enemy at least cost to ourselves. If your enemy and your adversary knows that, you might have a shot at deterrence. But if deterrence fails, you will have prepared, and then you will win and win decisively. This command is charged with looking over the hill, determining what economic, political, sociological, technological, and other trends out there in the future are going to impact directly in the conduct of war. We are living today, right this minute as we sit here in Austin, Texas, we are living through a fundamental change in the character of warfare. The nature of war is unlikely to change. That has to do with human behavior, luck, risk, chance, uh, and all of that. It's, it, and what is war? War is really the uh, human act of imposing your political will on your opponent through the use of violence. So the nature of war is probably not going to change as long as humans are involved in it. But the character of war changes frequently. It's based upon doctrine and organization, leader development and technology. And we are living through that right now, right this minute, and have been for some 20, 25 years. Right now, many of you have iPhones uh, in your pocket. Uh, we have cameras all over the place. We have sensors out there throughout the world. Today, militaries can see as like at no time in 10,000 years of human history. We can hit, strike the enemy like no time in human history with a degree of precision that has never before existed. So we can see and we can strike. We know that robots are coming on very, very quickly in the commercial sector and they're likely to have significant military application. We know artificial intelligence is here. We know there's a multitude of emerging technologies that are going to have, whether we like it or not, impact in the conduct of military operations. It is this command. It is that man right there, Mike Murray. It is Deputy Commander uh, Jim Richardson and Eric Wesley and Paul Ostrowski and all of the folks that will inhabit this building right in the heart of Austin 
that are going to determine victory or defeat in a future battlefield for the United States of America. That's how important this command is to our country. So, Governor Abbott, thank you so much for your support. Uh, Senator Corn and Senator Cruz, uh, Mayor Adler, and the entire Chamber of Commerce, UT, and everybody in this room. Uh, thanks to every single one of you uh, for supporting your nation, uh, supporting your army uh, on some future battlefield, and thereby saving American soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines' lives. So thank you very much. Texas strong. Secretary Esper, General Murray, and Command Sergeant Major Crosby will now join General Milley for the activation of U.S. Army Futures Command. Ladies and gentlemen, United States Army Futures Command will now be activated. Command Sergeant Major Michael Crosby will present the colors of the U.S. Army Futures Command to be uncased and unfurled. Effective 24 August 2018, the United States Army Futures Command is hereby established. Thank you, Secretary Esper, General Milley, and Command Sergeant Major Crosby. Ladies and gentlemen, Star Major Crosby will now pass the colors to the Chief of Staff of the Army. General Milley will now pass to General Murray. And General Murray will now pass to Command Sergeant Major Crosby, who will post the colors. Thank you, Secretary Esper, General Milley, and Command Sergeant Major Crosby. Ladies and gentlemen, on the occasion of General Murray taking command of the U.S. Army Futures Command, Mrs. Jane Murray is being presented with the bouquet of Texas wildflowers to welcome her to the command. Ladies and gentlemen, General Murray. First of all, thank you very much. And, and going fifth or sixth, I've lost count. Uh, all the good stuff has been taken, so I'm, I'm, and I'm not going to ad lib. And uh, General Carter Ham sitting right here taught me a long time ago. I got no experience in Africa, sir. Uh, but apparently there's an old tradition in Africa when you have a gathering like this that you say something like all, all honors observed and it covers you for everybody you miss in the introduction. So uh, I'm, I'm happy that you taught me that, sir. And let me say right up front, it's great to be back in Texas. It's been said several times. We've got about uh, Jane and I and my family about 10 years in Texas. Uh, two of my daughters graduated here. Five of the seven grandchildren were born in Texas. 
Uh, we were recently uh, property owners in Salado, and we were determined we were never coming back to Texas. So a year and a half ago, we sold it, and here we are. Um, and I can't tell you how incredibly honored I am uh, to be standing here in front of you today as the very first commander of Army Futures Command. And as the chief said, these things go on, or come off as easy as they go on, so hopefully the second won't be here very quickly, chief. Um, and I'm going to keep this fairly short because uh, it has already been a, a, an exciting day and, and there's a long way to go. I'd also like to recognize our national uh, political leaders, Senator Corn and Senator Cruz, uh, Judge Carter, it's good to see you again, sir. Uh, Judge Carter and I go way back uh, to Fort Hood days. Um, and, but I want to provide a special thanks to the, the local leaders. Uh, Governor, it was great sitting down with you yesterday. Mayor, it was great sitting down for you at uh, dinner a couple of nights ago, uh, very close to where you live. I appreciate the invitation to do that. And you have my absolute promise that I will do all I can to help you keep Austin weird. Minus, <laughs> minus the bicycle and thong thing. <laughs> <laughs> and then the Army leadership. And General Milley really talked about this already. This, uh, without the political backing uh, that the Senate provided, and to be honest with you, I really thought we were going to be on a red eye last night to get down here. Uh, four days ago, I was sitting in my office uh, doing yeoman's work as the, as the Army G8. And I think it was about um, 6.30 that evening um, when, Senator McC or, uh, when the senator got up and read. Uh, and he kind of went through very quickly, uh, 33 through 30, 2033 through 2038. And I said, I think that's it. And my phone, I sent to, to Secretary McCarthy. I said, sir, sir, I think that's it. And I didn't hear anything back. It's like, well, maybe that wasn't it. <laughs> <laughs> but it was it. So Jane and I are on a plane the next morning, and we're thrilled to be here in Austin, Texas with you. So Secretary Esper, General Milley, Secretary McCarthy, and General McConville, uh, thank you for the faith and confidence you've shown in me by trusting me with this command and the awesome responsibilities that go along with it. And it was almost, as General Lee said, three years ago when he introduced the idea. And the one person he continually has forgotten is Eric Wesley, uh, was also a part of that very small group as we worked through this. Um, and I really thought that it was dead uh, because we worked very hard for about a year on it, and then General Milley just quit mentioning it. Um, and I really think, sir, and you can tell me if I was wrong, uh, you were really waiting for the right political leadership. And I believe the right political leadership arrived you very quickly gained the backing of Secretary Esper, and then really the muscle and the horsepower of the dynamic duo over here, of the, the Undersecretary and General McConville, that really drove this home. And none of it would have been possible without, of course, uh, Senator McCain and entire congressional support. And my pledge to you, because of all that, is to do all I can to make sure that history looks back on all four of you kindly. Uh, and that future soldiers on a future battlefield are very thankful for the courage you have shown by making this fundamental but significant change to how the Army equips and modernizes our units and our soldiers. I'd also like to right here thank General Hamm and for AUSA for sponsoring uh, the reception that we'll all be at uh, this afternoon. And uh, I've already got a lot of pledges of future support, sir, from uh, your staff. Um, and we look forward to hosting a Huntsville-like event down here at some point in the future focused on uh, innovation and modernization. And for the family, no soldier makes this journey alone. And today, like every other day, over the past 36 years, I have been incredibly blessed to have the support of my parents, my in-laws, my siblings, my wife, and my children. And although most could not make it because of the long distances and short notice, I know that all of them are out there watching this via live stream. So I want them all to know how much their love and support has meant to me over the years and how much it means to me today. Although geographically dispersed across the United States, Army Futures Command will have a singular focus to make soldiers and units more effective and more lethal today and into the future. From this location, we will provide the unit of command and the unit of effort that will bring the concepts, requirements, science and technology, research development, testing and engineering and acquisition communities together to ensure that the United States Army remains the preeminent ground combat force in the world forever. This must be a team sport. It's, a, it's not about the success of a single organization or individual. It's about working together to ensure our soldiers have the capabilities they need when they need them to deploy, fight, and win on a modern battlefield against an incredibly lethal enemy. That must be the unifying theme 
For the sake of our soldiers, we simply have no other choice. We will bring the best talent we can inside and outside the government to address the Army's most pressing problems, and we intend to develop and deliver solutions at the speed of relevance, at the speed our soldiers deserve. For too long, we have focused only on cost, schedule, and performance. We must now also focus on value. Value to the young men and women that will be operating the equipment we build and utilizing the concepts we develop. We owe that not only to soldiers of today, but also to soldiers of future generations. In fact, to generations of soldiers that have yet to be born. Finally, I'm absolutely convinced that the single most important key to our success will be our ability to tap into the talent, the entrepreneurial spirit, and the access to key partners that are present today in Austin, and to those that will move here to join us in this critically important endeavor. And although I've only been on the ground for a couple days, I have absolutely felt the excitement inside and outside this building, and it is absolutely electric. We very much look forward to being productive members of your communities and, we make, and making you proud of what we will accomplish together. Thank you again for attending today, and in advance, thank you for helping us make sure that no United States Army soldier ever goes into harm's way wishing they had the very best technology and very best capability that this great country can deliver. And we owe them nothing less. Thank you very much. Thank you, General Murray. Ladies and gentlemen, please feel free to sing along with Deep in the Heart of Texas. The words can be found in your program. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the playing of the Army song. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. Please join us for refreshments in the back of the room. <laughs>